Hi, this is Sue Burke. Welcome to my podcast. I'd like to share 10 scientifically proven benefits of meditation with you. The practice of meditation is mentioned in written form as far back as 1500 BC. Modern science is finally discovering the benefits of mindfulness for mental health. I think you'll agree that with physical exercise, the more often you work out, the more benefits you'll see. The same is true with your brain on meditation. In fact, long-term practitioners of meditation have altered the structure and function of their brains, in a good way, by increasing neuroplasticity. What is neuroplasticity anyway? Neuroplasticity refers to the brain's ability to adapt. There are many different mechanisms of neuroplasticity, ranging from the growth of new connections to the creation of new neurons. An official definition of neuroplasticity is continuous processing, allowing short-term, medium-term, and long-term remodeling of the neuron synaptic organization with the aim of optimizing the functioning of neural networks during many different physiological activities such as learning and also following brain injury. That's a mouthful for saying we're exercising our neurons for optimal brain function. Meditation activates brain regions involved in cognitive and emotional control. I'm probably going to say this five more times, but there are, is a study on my website that uses MRI to catalog changes in brain anatomy after meditation. This happens in the gray and white matter of subjects who meditated. Meditation also decreases activity of default mode networks. What are default mode networks, you ask? Default mode networks are the networks most commonly used in our brains. We want to use our neurons in new ways, not relying on the same old default neural networks. Similar to exercise stretching and using our muscles in different ways, meditation stretches and uses our neurons in new ways, getting around the same old default neural networks. Let's look specifically at the benefits of mindfulness for mental health. For the purpose of this podcast, mindfulness is meditation. Mindfulness is defined technically as non-judgmental awareness of the present moment, which provides an opportunity to acknowledge and accept difficult physical and emotional sensations. First, meditation helps with depression. MRI results in many studies show meditation strengthen functional and structural connections between the amygdala and middle frontal gyrus. For more on brain anatomy, I have a great post on my website. Essentially, this in increase in communication correlates with improvements in clinical symptoms of depression. Meditation reduces stress. The physical threats of ancient times have largely been replaced by psychological worries. So it's good that not, we're not being chased by lions anymore, but now we've got psychological worries. Studies of people who have meditated over the long term show changes in the areas of the brain concerned with stress and anxiety. Physiological stress, as I'm sure you'll agree, is a major provocative factor in symptoms of chronic inflammatory conditions, and we certainly don't want that. If you want to read a brief summary about the parts of the brain associated with stress and anxiety, along with the stress hormone cortisol, I have an article link on my website. Meditation also helps increase self-esteem. I don't know about you, but I could use a little bit more. Without getting too bogged down with the anatomy and physiology of the brain, the limbic system and its functional networks are closely related to multiple personality traits, including self-esteem esteem, extroversion, and unfortunately neuroticism. Meditation encourages people to rely more on intuitive feelings of self-worth. Meditation has also been shown in studies to improve body image. 
Meditation helps decrease conspicuous consumption, a.k.a. shopping. My husband is all in for this benefit of mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. Research in cons consumer behavior has demonstrated the pervasiveness of conspicuous consumption as a means of psychological salve from inner conflicts such as self-discrepancies with regard to one's abilities or one's self-esteem. Admittedly, I'm not a fan of this study or a revelation. Moving on. Meditation helps with anxiety. Meditation is an effective tool to help experience negative emotions without analyzing or ruminating on them. This gives us more control over our thoughts and therefore our feelings. Rumination is defined as a recurrent, self-reflective, and uncontrollable focus on depressed mood and its causes and consequences. We often ruminate over things we have no control over, such as painful past events. We're focused on internal mental state processes, such as memory retrieval or imagining the future. Mindfulness can help us interrupt the automatic connection of negative mood, negative thinking, and bodily sensations such as fatigue. This often link, trigger, or reactivate a downward mood spiral, and nobody wants that. Meditation helps us stay in the present so we don't dig up these memories or worry about the future. We stand up straight. I have a study link, which I've said, but I do have many study links that show meditation helps applicants, for example, with pre-interview anxiety. Meditation changes resting state neural connections. Meditation also decreases brain atrophy. Research shows that people who practice meditation regularly have structural changes in their brains, which includes increasing cortical thickness. A study uh, conducted in the Department of Neurology School of Medicine, University of California, Center for Aging, Health, and Well-Being showed that only after 40 days of mindfulness meditation, structural and functional changes occurred in the brain, brains of novices who started practicing meditation. Meditation also helps increase attention span. Research has found that long-term mindfulness meditation practice promotes executive functioning and the ability to sustain attention. Mind wandering can be costly, especially when we're engaged in demanding tasks. Preliminary studies suggest that mindfulness can be a promising anecdote for mind wandering, helping us concentrate with work, school, or play, or extreme sport. I'll be much safer when I base jump because I meditate. Meditation also helps with insomnia. I do have a post about the brain benefits of napping on my website, but back to meditation and insomnia. Increasing evidence shows that meditation can be successfully used for insomnia treatment. This holds true with chronic insomnia as well. Meditation can make you more empathetic. A study showed that as little as eight weeks of meditation training helped increase empathy in teachers during COVID and likewise with healthcare workers. Meditation can increase cognition. Routine meditation practice is associated with a long-lasting change in the topography of the brain, as well as long-lasting changes in hippocampal function. Meditation can also reduce pain perception. The subjective experience of one's environment is constructed by interactions among sensory, cognitive, and affective processes. Meditation influences such processes by ena enabling a non-evaluative representation of sensory events. Of course, I have a study on my website that shows after four days of mindfulness meditation training, meditating in the presence of noxious stimulation significantly reduced pain and unpleasantness by 57% and pain intensity ratings by 40%. I hope that those study subjects got paid for being exposed to noxious stimulation. It may be that I've just gone over 11 scientifically proven benefits of meditation. Be it 10 or 11, 
there are science-backed benefits of mindfulness for mental health. Mindfulness can help you learn how to be present and appreciate the simple pleasures of everyday life. Reconnect with yourself and experience the present moment, like the lovely sound of my voice. Mindfulness can help you interrupt the automatic connection between negative mood and negative thinking. So right now, pick up your head and brighten your gaze. Look around at the world. That's the first step towards using meditation to stay in the present. Do you meditate? If not, and you'd like ideas or direction about next steps for incorporating mindfulness-based cognitive therapy into your day, please go to my website and subscribe. I have the link below. It's www.susanburkcook.com. I will be happy to send resources your way. Likewise, if you just use my contact page and email me, I will reply. In fact, I love hearing from you, so please reach out. Thanks for listening to my podcast. Take care.